Here's an interesting addition to the uh, shack uh, workshop. Um, this is an IFR 1000S radio test set which uh, will be very familiar to uh, anyone who worked in radio communications uh, back in the 80s and 90s and uh, even a little after that. Despite their age, this sort of test equipment is still in demand. Getting one can be a bit hit and miss. You can bring stuff in from the USA, but that can be a bit of a gamble. This particular one came from a trusted private source in Australia. I was able to obtain some history about it. Uh, the unit's been professionally serviced. It's got a new cathode ray tube, along with new capacitors in the power supply. And there's also some calibration stickers on the unit dating from the late 1990s. So fairly confident. One of the attractions of these units is that they're still easily repairable. The blue fiberglass PC boards in some early IFRs can be fragile and you've got to be careful soldering them. But unlike some of the other test sets around, there's very little unobtainium in these things. Uh, no programmable gate arrays or firmware in volatile memory or esoteric semiconductors. Just easily obtained 74 series TTL or 74LS 4000 series CMOS and transistors like 2N2222s. All very straightforward stuff. When it landed on my bench, I gave the unit a thorough check and uh, everything pretty much worked as it should. The uh, spectrum analyzer showed what it was meant to. The uh, signal generator was uh, spot on frequency with, uh, with excellent stability and uh, everyone, everything pretty much spot on but there were uh, a few uh, small issues which, uh, which needed to be looked at. Several of the front panel lamps didn't illuminate when they should and that was simply a case of blown globes. And yes, they really are globes, incandescent ones. And one day I might change them to LEDs but I've got a good supply of little 5 volt lamps and they're easy to change without any disassembly required. The spectrum analyzer grass was sitting a little bit above the baseline. Easy fix with a simple adjustment, but that did require removal from the case and hinging up a few of the assemblies to get to it. The final issue was that the squelch circuit didn't work at all. Turning it to the off position opened the squelch as it should, but other than that there was no adjustment. And the receiver also appeared to be a little bit deaf. Fortunately, there's a wealth of documentation available on the web, including full service manuals, and I was able to trace the issue to the 250kHz IF board. A clue was found when I discovered that someone had applied some silicon to help hold the board in place. A bit of prodding and tapping revealed that the board was indeed a bit touchy, giving the appearance of a poor connection or a dry joint. Attempting alignment of the board gave up another clue, the narrow band gain adjustment trim pot was incredibly touchy and it was impossible to obtain the correct setting required in the alignment procedure. Just touching the board near the trim pot with an alignment tool was enough to drive the receiver nuts. So to cut a long story short, although it looked like a dirty edge connector or a dry joint, the fault turned out to be the narrow band gain adjustment trim pot itself. Replacing the 10k pot allowed full alignment, giving proper operation of the squelch and yielding the expected receiver sensitivity. Replacing the trim pot removed all traces of touch sensitivity, so whoever applied that silicon sort of disguised the symptoms but missed the actual fault. So, after a few further checks and some minor touching up of the alignment as required, I've now got a fully functional and very useful bit of test gear sitting on the bench. What better to help repairing 80s radios than an 80s test set? Oh, well, don't need any help. I'm good. No, well, I've done it uh, for other stuff now. I just, you find it online and, yeah, just see how you go. And, and um, the good old how-to on YouTube. <laughs> Isn't it good? The inter like, we talk a lot about the bad things of the internet, but learning how to do something is a good yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. Rachel, great to hear from you. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Right, My number one, 300, 33, 12, 33, what's been fixed at your place recently? Robin in Maitland, good morning. Hello, Kaya, how are you? Good, tell me about your security door. <laughs> well... Hello, 
cusp VK two double AK. So there we have it, the IFR 1000S.